one, and you can use an. I like to use an electric one because it's just a lot easier, faster. I don't have to work so hard at it. And a pair of scissors, some staples, of course, and then another little tool here is these are called pliers. These are canvas pliers, and they have a little spring here. They make different kinds, and but this one has a little spring here. So when you clip a hold of your canvas, you can see that it it bounces back, okay, and it cuts down on the stress of your hand and wear your hand out so much, okay. So those are just the simple little pieces of equipment you need. Now you're going to need some canvas and your stretcher strips. Now, every painting uh, that you paint with canvas has what we call the support system. Now the support system for this case is wooden strips. And we're just going to do a small one today, and, and, but you can do all sizes. These are called stretcher strips. And if you'll notice, they've been made so that they uh, interlock together with these little grooves. We don't use any nails, we don't use staples to hold them or any kind of fastening system. All you do is you take these and they're, and they're labeled on the side, you know, what size they are. So you just put them in here like this. See if we can get in and, you, and see they're already mitered at 45 degree angle. So really, you just put them in together, okay, until they kind of create a nice little joint. Then you come over here and you put the other side on, okay. Then you slip the other one in. Of course, you can make your own if you want to. I've done that a few times myself. Now, when you reach a point, now this will be a, whoops, just a tad bit noisy. When you kind of get them sort of halfway together, you'll notice that it's not exactly square. It has to be square. Now, how do you square it up? Well, you can get a T-square and put it around it and do that. You can take it on the edge of a square table, like in this case. I don't know if they can get down here and see this or not, but all I'm going to do, this table is a, uh, perfectly square. I just lay it at the corner of my table or on the floor if you have a tiled floor where you have square tiles and you just kind of turn it around and get all of your angles just right. And if it's completely square all the way around then you know you've got it. And I always make sure though that my joints are completely pushed together. That is an important thing. Sometimes you just kind of tap them like this and that sort of helps square it up. I'm going to double check. Yeah, so it's perfectly square all the way around, looks like. Now, you can do this to large canvases as well. Now, I'm not going to, let me just grab one here and show you. Even on this great big one here, you can see right here, this is a large canvas. It's done the same way, except that there are some braces on the back because it's so large so it doesn't bow in the middle. Okay, you can see that there. So if you get to a larger canvas, you'll have to, have some braces and you can buy the braces that have all the little components and parts to make this work for you, okay? Now, once you get it square and you're ready to stretch it, then you can, if you want to, to keep these stab stable, you can put a staple or two in there if you choose to, okay? I don't normally do that, but you can. All right, now the next thing you do is you get you some canvas. Now, this is just a small piece off of a larger roll, but this is a large uh, this came off of a six foot roll. Most of your canvases come in rolls that are about 72 inches, 54 inches uh, tall and about six yards long. You can usually get a roll that's about that, about six yards long. And it's a pre-primed, now this is called a pre-primed cotton duct canvas. They make all kinds, they make linen canvas for portrait work because it's real smooth. This is just sort of a medium duct cotton canvas. You'll notice one side's white, the other side's sort of a tannish color, a creamy color. That's the unprimed side. <clears throat> this has already been sealed with gesso, so you can paint right on that if you want to without sealing it again if you choose to. Now, what you'll do is you take your canvas, you lay it out on your table, and all you do is just get it to where it's a size that's a little bit bigger than the stretcher bars, okay? And you see, if I fold it over, it's a little larger, so you can bend it over. You want it to be able to bend all the way over, and the reason for that is so that your pliers We'll have something to get a hold of, <clears throat> okay? So you lay that down, you get it nice and square. And after you've done that, then you take your, your staple gun. And what I normally do is start on one side. Now, this is not difficult, but you just pick it up, making sure it's still square, okay? And you just take your staple gun. I'll try to do this where you can see it. And you put one staple in on this side, okay? Then you flip it over. And this is where your pliers come in handy, your stretcher pliers. See, it's got this little bar right there. That's so, let me turn this around on the back here so you can see. When you do this, 
you pull it up against the bar and you pull down and that creates a little wedge and that tightens it, see? And so what you do is you hold this, the pliers with one hand with that little bar on the back and then you staple here, okay? Now, you go around to the other end now, <coughs> bend that canvas over, put your plier right on the canvas and see, remember the little little uh, peg there, a little bar, that's what you wedge against the uh, stretcher strip. Stretch it fairly tight. Now you go all the way around and you do all four sides first, right in the center, always start from the center. Now any of you that have done any upholstery work or anything like that will know that you always start the center, and see that makes the tight uh, center, and it kind of starts getting the wrinkles out. And then all you do is you start going around the canvas like this, I usually put a couple of staples on each side of the center one. And I go, I just go work my way around, and you'll notice this goes relatively quick. Let's go around to the other side. <clears throat> we might even use this canvas today to do some of our studies on. Now the reason artists like to stretch their own canvases is first of all, you can create a much larger variety of you know, shapes and sizes. You can buy different kinds of canvas that you just can't buy normally uh, with a pre-stretched canvas. Pre-stretched canvases come basically in what we call standard sizes, you know, from 5 by 7 on up to, you know, 36 by 48 or something like that. But there's an array of sizes in between. And that's why, like, this is not a standard size. This is a 10 by 14. You can find these, but it's rare. So I prefer to stretch anything if I have a painting that requires a certain size. Now you see I'm almost done here. And I'd like for you to see the whole thing in process because you can see as I go, all the wrinkles are coming out, and it's getting tight as a drum. So if by stretching it yourself, you can also get it tighter now as you get towards the end, you can just go ahead and finish it out. But see, you only put two or three staples most of the time on each side of your center, and then you just keep working around. That way your wrinkles come out evenly. You don't have any wrinkles at all. Just a couple left here, and then we'll have the main stretcher done. Yeah, I want to put one more over here. Okay, looks good. Now, now it's tight. I mean, that is so tight, it's perfect to work on. You don't even have to stretch it with any, uh, you know, by wetting it or putting the pegs in there. Although, you can put the little plastic pegs in there that we talked about last week, and, uh, or you can wet it with water. If it starts to sag for any reason, it'll tighten back up. Okay, now what do you do with all these leftover ends? Well, if you buy a pre-stretched canvas, I usually trim those off, but the way we normally do it, just like a folding a corner, you just take the corner and you just bend it over like this, okay? See where it's kind of at an angle? Then you take your staple gun and don't staple your finger. I've done that a few times. Take the other corner. There. And I just, it's kind of like wrapping a package. It's not much different than that. And then this one. This makes a nice, neat finish look to it so that it can fit into your canvas, I mean your frame. Now what do you do with this left over here? Well you can take a razor blade and trim it off real nice and neat if you prefer that. Now most professional artists don't do that. They take it and bend it over on the back like this and just fold it over like you would a package and this is how you kind of support your, your back. So you just, you just put a staple there and you just fold it over. So 